We're rumbling on with our patch 7.0 tier list. This video, we're covering the high mid tiers, the B tiers. These are the characters just underneath high tier. They're very close to solo main viable territory, and unlike the low tiers or even the low mid tiers, they have a lot more strengths than weaknesses. If you're looking to improve on your strengths, then head over to ProGuides.com. High tier, low tier, whatever tier your main is in, we've got resources to help you, like a live coaching platform, courses from the pros, and character guides. Check out one of gaming's leading training platforms today. This is the tier where strengths become so strong that they can be overpowering. Some characters in the high mid tier are arguably the best at certain aspects of the game. However, these characters have a few fatal flaws that still keep them out of high tier and make them a little dangerous to solo main. However, they are good enough that you can often cover their flaws and bad matchups with a secondary rather than another main. They also make for very good secondaries themselves and often have good matchups against entire archetypes. The strength of their kits show in bracket too, as most of them have some decent results. We're going to kick this video off with the characters that moved up the tier list. The biggest mover is the legendary bounty hunter herself, Samus Aran. Samus battled up from our D tier and might just bomb jump up even further. At the end of the 5.0 patch cycle, we didn't see Samus shining in results or strength. Samus mains like Quick, Joker, YB, Advo, and Parme proved us wrong. Samus has big strengths and big weaknesses. Her heavyweight and floaty airspeed make her disadvantage pretty rough and make it hard for her to land. She's a little slow moving too, so she has a pretty bad disadvantage state overall and relies too much on her bombs to get out of trouble. While she's got the range and out of shield options to put up a good defensive wall, she looks worse than most of the cast when you break that wall down. And back in the 5.0 days, Samus struggled to kill. However, Samus found a bunch of upgrades on planet, uh, patch 7.0 and fixed her kill power. Most notably, Samus's up throw kills now, which means that shielding is a lot less effective than it used to be. That added kill power really matters because Samus has always had great damage output and a great advantage state. Samus can get Olimar levels of damage off of various charge shot combos, and now her Zare is better at comboing and doing damage too. Samus can also cover a ton of options out of shield and on the ledge, making her great in advantage. Over the course of Ultimate, Samus mains have also shown that between charge shot combos and ledge trapping, the character has a surprising amount of depth and room to grow. With her buffs in patch 7.0, Zelda got the Samus treatment too. She has increased kill power off of up air, forward tilt, and phantom, and she gets more damage from some attacks too. Her neutral air now combos and works better as well, which helps her combo game. Between her buffs, her skill set, and Ven's consistent solid results, we're putting Zelda up from C tier to B tier. In patch 7.0, Zelda can sit back, set up a zone full of hitboxes, and do more damage, combo more consistently, and kill earlier. Now she functions like a slightly budget Samus, not having quite the same results, player base, and depth, but still having the high damage and oppressive advantage state. Zelda can also get much earlier kills than Samus. However, Zelda may be even worse in disadvantage than Samus. In particular, Zelda could have trouble getting off the ledge and resetting neutral. While her neutral special and new neutral air can help her disadvantage, they're not enough to stop her from getting bullied by fast, good rushdown characters. However, Zelda can keep up with a lot of other zoners and can bully some of the characters in the lower parts of the tier list. And guess who just joined the fast, good rushdown character club? Sonic? Well, kinda. Sonic is a rushdown character, just one that's probably not gonna approach unless he has to. In Ultimate, speed is an advantage, and Sonic has insane speed. That insane speed makes him one of the best bait and punish characters. On top of speed, Sonic has tons and tons of combos. One hit almost always leads into another, which makes his whiff punishing even better. He can struggle to kill, but it's not that big of a struggle given solid edgeguarding tools and decent kill options. We put Sonic in C tier before because his up air doesn't work well, which hurts his juggling. His grab is underwhelming too, making it tougher to beat shield. He also has kind of a linear neutral pattern because he often has to throw out aerials out of his spin dash to be threatening. Plus, he doesn't have tons of disjoints or range. Despite those flaws, Sonic has had crazy good results recently as players have learned all his weird new combo trees. Ken was already doing pretty well in Japan, and now Wrath and Sunido are doing better too. Sonic honestly has arguments to be in high tier, but we're keeping him in high mid for now because we want to let the meta develop and see if competitors can learn how to counter him. And if Sonic isn't being slightly buffed by his brief increase in cultural relevance from the Sonic movie. You gotta look at all the angles. 
Cloud got some pretty nice buffs in patch 7.0, but he's moving up from C to B tier less because of buffs and more because, like with Sonic, his mains have done better at leveraging his strengths and covering his weaknesses. Cloud's weaknesses felt big at first because we were so used to the OP Smash 4 version of everyone's favorite JRPG hero. Cloud does have a pretty weak recovery and can struggle to kill. However, Cloud mains have shown that creative uses of limit and careful uses of air dodging can make both weaknesses pretty manageable. It also helps that Patch 7.0 buffed both Cloud's recovery and kill power. In terms of strength, Cloud has great hitboxes, huge disjoints, pretty solid damage and combo options, and some surprisingly good runoff edgeguard options. He's also got solid base stats and frame data. Now that we're seeing Cloud players like Thor, Diabeo, Spargo, and Cola do even better, we feel pretty confident putting Cloud in the high mid-tier. He's not cheesy to death with falling up airs good anymore, but he's a very well-rounded bread-and-butter character. If you just look at the US and Europe, you might not understand why we moved Toon Link up from C to B tier. If you look at Japan, you can see why. And it's not just because Toon Link gets better results in Japan from players like Sigma, Rima, and Level 1. It's also because you can better see the character's strengths. We know Adult and Young Link for how they use projectiles to open up their opponents and get kills and damage in those openings. Toon Link works more like a pure zoner. Akin to how Samus uses Charge Shot or Zelda uses Phantom, Toon Link's projectiles give him a lot of space and some combos at the right percent. But a lot of times, Toon Link is just happy to hit his opponent. Though Toon Link lacks the combos and the kill confirms of the other Links, he has good raw kill options. His forward smash, forward tilt, and up special all pack a bigger punch and let him get kills off of ledge trapping and raw reads better. He uses projectiles to condition opponents and build those reads and traps. While Toon Link does have a pretty good game plan, he can be underwhelming in his damage output, recovery, and range. That means the high and top tiers can break through his zone and beat him consistently. Now that we've talked about some swordsmen who have risen in the tier lists, let's talk about one who dropped. We've put Marth down from A tier to B tier. Marth is a tricky character to rank because Lucina is basically a better version of him, so he doesn't get played nearly as much as the other high mid tiers. Yes, Marth can kill earlier than Lucina with tippers. Yes, he can do more damage too. However, his sweet spot is inconsistent in Ultimate and often hinders him. Consistency can sound like a purely results-based measurement, but it's part of a character's kit and theoretical strength. If a character has inconsistencies in their combos and kill confirms, they can drop them at key moments, making them an overall worse character. We're bringing Marth down because it looks like his potential doesn't measure up to what we thought it could. It's also looking like he's getting crowded out by other Fire Emblem units that have better base stats and growths. That said, Marth has his flashes of brilliance, like when MKLeo used him to carve up European brackets. Marth's raw speed, disjoints, edge guarding, recovery, and kill power make him high mid-tier for us. He's just not high tier anymore. Yoshi also dropped out of our high tier and into our high mid-tier. Unlike Marth, Yoshi is very consistent and pretty simple to play. That made Yoshi look really strong in the early meta. However, as time has gone on, more players have learned how to bait, punish, and play around Yoshi's strong, high damage moves. They've also learned how to abuse Yoshi's slightly lackluster recovery and slightly linear neutral game. Yoshi's eggs aren't a good enough projectile to cover his approach, and his options can be predictable. Yoshi can obliterate a lot of the characters in his tier and below it, but he can struggle against several prominent high and top tiers. But don't get too down on Yoshi, this character still has combos, openings, and raw damage. He's also got a great mix of speed and weight that makes him agile but survivable, and double jump armor which makes his jumps much harder to abuse. Like Cloud, he's pretty well-rounded. We're still seeing Yoshi mains like Ron, Suarez, Meimei, and Yoshidora do well with the character too. So it's more likely Yoshi would go up than down the list. For now, we're keeping the dino in high mid-tier. Our last character to drop from A to B tier is Ken, who's less well-rounded and more send you to the moon with a true Shoryu or get walled out. Ken got maybe the best buffs any character has ever gotten in an Ultimate, and we were pretty hyped about it. We put him straight up into our A tier because Ken now had kill power, combos, and one of the best ground games in Ultimate. We've adjusted downwards because while Ken does have super threatening combos and kill confirms, he can't land and recover that well. Ken really has to rely on focus attack to mix up his landing, and the multi-hits and disjoints in ultimate make focus attack less effective. When Ken gets knocked in the air or off stage, he takes a ton of damage trying to get back. That is, if he doesn't just die. 
we're also just not seeing an explosion of results from any of the fighting game characters. The characters have some great mains like Riddles, F-Sharp, and Takara, but even they struggle with getting zoned, walled out, repeat edgeguarded, and juggled by the higher tier characters. Some results might come as the characters get optimized, especially given Ken and Ryu's recent 7.0 buffs. However, right now, it looks their disadvantage is too bad for them to be high tier. We put Ryu in B tier because Ken was the better option for most matchups. Ryu had a better Hadouken and Tatsu, but Ken was faster and better at getting early kills, which was what you played the Shotos for. Now that Ryu got his Hadouken buffed so it applies more pressure and has more combos into his Tatsu, we could see Ryu doing just as well as Ken. Ryu could become another option for Ken and Terry mains to pick, elevating the results all three characters get. Ryu might just be able to zone and play against zoners better, helping all three characters get to A tier. However, we need a bit more time for the 7.0 buffs to pan out and to see Ryu in action before we feel justified moving anyone up to high tier. Right now, we're seeing Ryu get exploited in similar ways as Ken, so we're keeping them both in B tier. Now it's time to talk about the fancy new fighting lad, Terry Bogard. Harry is probably the most fun and flashy fighter yet. He's got very similar problems and strengths to Ken and Ryu, great kill confirms and burst options, and a rough disadvantage state. Terry is different in that his recovery is pretty good, but he doesn't have focus attack to mix up his landing or ledge play. Terry also has a bigger comeback mechanic and some stronger air-to-air -air moves, though less shield pressure than Ken and Ryu. Overall, he's pretty similar to the Shotos in his general strengths. Alright, alright, let's get the hype new DLC characters out of the way and talk about Hero. He's the new one, right? Hero is a pretty solid zoner who can punish approaches with his high damage specials and big disjoints. Oh, and he could rob people with RNG. A lot of people see Hero's RNG as a higher top tier level strength, but it's not as good as it seems because it's inconsistent. To be a higher top tier, a character needs to be consistent, and luck wouldn't be luck if it was consistent. Sure, Hero can take a stock at 70% by the ledge with oomph or a crit or a thwack, but Shulk can do that with smash art and doesn't have to worry about RNG. Not to mention, shield beats most of his range options. Hero also doesn't have great frame data and can lose a lot of interactions because of that. Hero's lack of consistency, lack of combos, and mediocre frame data makes him a kind of unpopular character that lacks strong results. However, he shined as a secondary or co-main for players like Salem and can do some pretty good work against a lot of characters. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the DLC you really want to hear about, Banjo and Kazooie, who somehow ended up as the colorful animal version of Snake. Like Snake, Banjo thrives at walling out opponents with his grenade, anti-airing jump approaches, taking trades, and outlasting his opponent. Like Snake, Banjo can struggle in disadvantage and with getting combo. Unlike Snake, Banjo has a harder time getting kills because he doesn't have as good a kill confirm or as strong a kill move as Snake does. Banjo is an overall pretty solid zoner who can mess up any player regardless of main if they don't know the matchup. Banjo's Wonder Wing can punish all kinds of mid-range movement and neutral choices that most other moves can't. However, when players learn Banjo's capabilities and ranges, the bird-bear combo doesn't get as many early Wonder Wing and down throw kills. But even with matchup experience, Banjo is still a character you gotta worry about and watch out for, so we're putting him in our B tier. This time it's for real. This time, we're actually gonna talk about that brand new DLC character that sparked so much controversy, Piranha Plant! Okay, oh, okay, okay, it's Byleth time. Byleth is a weirdly heavy, weirdly slow, weirdly disappointing new Fire Emblem character that packs a mean punch. Byleth has great kill power, ledge trapping tools, and disjoints. She's also got some decent combos, great high damage burst options, good recovery, and decent out of shield options. She lacks the speed, combo game, and huge arsenal of neutral tools to seem like a high tier though. Since she's new, we also don't have a ton of info about her either. MK, Leo, and Nico have used her well, but that doesn't say much, as Zachary got impressive early wins with Banjo, and for a while, DeBuzz was doing some stuff with Hero. Matchup experience cuts both ways, and we have to wait for players to learn the Byleth matchup to truly grade the Professor. For now, we're giving her a B. She seems pretty good, but not that great. Just don't be surprised if you see Byleth go up or down the list. In our last tier list, we thought Falco might pop up the list with players like Juice getting results. However, Falco's neutral is a bit too linear, his recovery is a bit too exploitable, and he just doesn't have the strength to join the other spaces right now. Falco does have pretty nice aerial mobility, a good foxtrot, some really good combos, and nice edgeguards. 
Falco's problem is predictability. With his recovery, his kill confirms, his combos, and really a lot of his neutral being too predictable. After a while, lots of players learn the matchup and keep Falco from getting anything he wants. It's up till. He wants up till. There. We said it. We said the thing. Even with him being predictable, Falco is still better than a lot of the cast. He just isn't versatile enough to be high tier. Like Falco can rely too much on up tilt, Luigi can rely too much on his down throw. Luigi has the best, most practical zero to death and grab combo in the game. It makes him a super lethal and pretty darn good character. Even without grab, he's got a great combo breaker in the form of his cyclone, and he has tons of other quick moves. His Zare also has a surprising amount of uses. Luigi could become high tier if Elegant keeps it up. However, Luigi does have some big problems like a lackluster recovery, a lack of disjoints, bad matchups in the higher tiers, and the second worst airspeed in the game for some reason. Why is the green jump man a grappler who has worse airspeed than Ganon? Anyways, combine his poor speed and lack of disjoints, and Luigi can't handle range as well as he handles ghosts. He's good, but just like always, he's overshadowed by his brother. Oh no! We said grab too loud and now Bowser is running over and he's weirdly fast for some reason. Faster than Inkling fast! Wait, what? Why is he that fast? In Ultimate, Bowser has great ground speed and frame data despite being the heaviest character in the game. Combine that with good out of shield options and Bowser's disadvantage is actually tolerable. On top of all that, Bowser has a crazy good command grab that kills early, good nair combos, and good ledge trapping tools. The king is back and in rare form. Leon has shown just how good Bowser can be too, scoring pretty high placings and upsets. However, as players have learned how to fight against Bowser, the character has stagnated a little. He's good, but he does exploit matchup inexperience to look better than he really is. He also has both some really strong and really weak matchups, which makes him harder to solo main reliably. While he can annihilate some characters that can't deal with his moves, he can suffer against the small, combo-focused characters that can dodge his attacks, build huge percentage leads, and edgeguard him. Ness is just the example of a small character with tons of combos. Ness has a lot of great combo starters, a great kill throw, pretty nice ledge trapping, and some pretty good movement options. He's got some great players who have great results too, namely Best Ness and Gact. Ness struggles to recover against some characters who can call out his heinous air dodge or interrupt his up special safely. However, his recovery isn't as big a problem as his range. Ness doesn't have the tools to break the wall of disjoints a lot of characters can put up. His aerials don't have the size or the duration to challenge the many good sorties in the cast. Ness is a pretty strong character that can handle a lot of matchups well, but he struggles against an important archetype and that keeps him from high tier. That might be good for our ears though. This character can be fun to watch, but he is not fun to listen to. Here's another character that communicates through unintelligible yelling, Link. Although Link's yelling at least isn't so high pitched and high frequency. Link has great results from the Japanese player T and from his neutral air. Link's neutral air lasts a long time and has a massive hitbox, making it frustratingly good for a lot of scenarios. Link also has pretty good frame data, good range tools, a nice stage control tool with his bomb, and good disjoints. Link could easily be high tier, but his recovery is pretty exploitable for a lot of the better characters. Plus, he's as slow as the Belmonts, making him one of the slower characters in the whole cast, so he can't really chase down and pressure characters or run away from and camp characters that well. He also doesn't have that many other moves as strong as Neutral Air, which means he can be a bit over-reliant on it and predictable. That just about does it for our high mid-tiers. Next time around, we'll have the high tiers. These are the totally solo main viable characters. Of course, if you're still learning ultimate and learning your main, it can be a good strategy to stick to that character for a while. Secondaries are pretty important in ultimate, but good fundamentals and character knowledge is even more important. A practiced low tier main will beat the unpracticed top tier main. Not to mention, more characters are viable and strong in Ultimate than in any Smash game. So pretty much any character can make for a good main, and oftentimes it's best to pick the character that calls out to you, not the character at the top of the tier list. After all, even a lot of high mid-tier characters can surprise people and exploit matchup inexperience. But regardless of who you main, be sure to check out ProGuides.com, as we've got lessons for everybody over there. And be sure to subscribe and take a look at our channel. We've got something for everyone over there too. 